tonight. Downtown Prince George had a busy year in 2023. We find out more about some of the challenges facing the area. Plus, Vanderhoof City Council is moving forward to apply for funding for new housing developments. And a local teacher was recognized for retiring after a wonderful 36 year career. Good evening, I'm Eddie Huband and welcome to CKPG News. Our top story, Prince George's downtown has faced a number of issues over the years and businesses have not been exempt from their own challenges. At Monday night's council meeting, downtown Prince George gave a presentation to let council know what issues they're facing and what they hope to see. Downtown Prince George recently gave a presentation to City Council to highlight what has taken place in our downtown in 2023. Executive Director of Downtown Prince George Colleen Van Mook says that in 2023 and in years past, certain programs have had to have been ramped up. In the last few years, our clean and safe programs have definitely uh, been ramped up uh, due to just needing to ensure that our downtown is uh, taken care of in terms of litter and debris. And we are faced with more situations of uh, biohazard cleanup and we're try try just trying to make sure that our downtown is, as we say, clean and safe. In 2023, downtown Prince George's clean and safe programs have cleaned up over 8,300 needles and 4,700 biohazards from the streets, as well as over 5,000 garbage bags. Mayor Simon Yu says the community safety town hall that took place in May will provide council with a blueprint for taking action in the downtown. It is our blueprint uh, that come out of the, the town hall meeting that we will take positive action to improve the public security, uh, especially around downtown and uh, near the Markinson flat area. Van Mook says that downtown Prince George has seen a need to increase their budget when it comes to dealing with debris and biohazard cleanup. We also want to share that we have noticed a uh, definite uh, need to increase our budgets in those areas, but we've also been able to partner not only with funding, but with organizations like the PG Brain Injury Group and with DART, who are social enterprises that are helping us make sure that our downtown is clean and safe. Advocating and promoting businesses in the downtown is a big part of downtown Prince George's work, and those businesses are just more than restaurants and shops. One of the other things that we want to emphasize is that as an organization, we are here to promote the downtown businesses. And we actually represent uh, over 450 businesses in our downtown. And that is restaurants, that is shops, that is doctors, lawyers, banks. Another positive note for the organization in 2024 is that it is their 25th anniversary and they say they will continue advocating for the best possible environment for downtown. Adam Burles, CK, PG News. The Minister of Emergency Management and Climate Readiness has been touring the region over the past week, all with an eye to prepare for wildfire season. Minister Hoof and to various organizations in Prince George, talking about emergency preparedness. She says despite the consistent rain in we recent weeks, the Northeast region is facing drought and with it comes forest fire. But the minister recommitted to a new $21 million depot. We are building a $21 million equipment depot right here in Prince George to support efforts across the north. The, the where, maybe not so much yet, but I can talk a little bit about what it does. So currently we have uh, an existing depot in both Chilliwack and then one in Prince George. That's a very small one. Um, it's kind of by our zone office downtown. Uh, it's where we keep all of our um, obvious firefighting equipment that gets shipped out around the province, but then also Really importantly, it's where all our fire camp equipment is kept, and those are those very large trailers, so needing more space. Um, so Chilliwack is kind of our, our large depot where we host a lot of this stuff, um, and so an increased uh, size facility in Prince George just gives us a lot more flexibility in moving uh, much more equipment around a lot faster. Obviously, from the lower mainland is a long haul up to Fort Nelson, so having uh, just some more expanded um, area here in Prince George will allow that uh, just more smooth operations around. In terms of some of those more details, that's kind of just recently been um, funded to BC Welfare Service, so they're still kind of working through the procurement. But in a nutshell, that's kind of the essence of why, um, why Prince George uh, is a, a good location for the other depot. 
One man was arrested and another two were injured in a reported shooting Wednesday afternoon near Wells. RCMP say they responded to reports of someone suffering from a gunshot wound 17 kilometers up the 1600 Forest Service Road at around 3 o'clock. An investigation revealed that two men were suffering from non-life-threatening injuries and the third man was at the Wells RCMP detachment with the intention of turning himself in. One man was arrested and has since been released pending further investigation. And while the investigation is in its early stages, police say this appears to be an isolated incident with no threat to the public. No charges have been laid yet. Anyone with information is asked to call police. Council received a building permit and development permit summary for May with 33 permits issued for the month. The May total is made up of eight commercial and industrial permit permits, 25 residential permits worth a combined to total of $41.5 million. And one city councilor says that what we've seen in May is reassuring. Until April, we were uh, really quite concerned because we'd seen a, a market downturn. And after 10 years of some pretty staggering boom, uh, uh, we were we were pretty uncertain. A lot of factors influence construction, and when, what we saw in May was a dramatic bounce back. So that was driven partially by the the $50 million parkade that Northern Health has put together, but also by multifamily dwellings. So the idea of getting housing in place has really taken hold, and now we're seeing those business uh, the the businesses coming in, building, getting construction going. That's great for the economy, but it also means that we're going to have uh, a better result for the housing in Prince George. Travel plans for Canadians may get a little more complicated this coming holiday weekend as strike action is possible from WestJet. Adam Burles joins us now. So, uh, Adam, what's the latest on this potential strike at WestJet? So there's been some developments um, since this morning. If, if we were to talk about this this morning, we still would be thinking that WestJet um, mechanics will be going on strike tomorrow at 4.30 p.m. Pacific. But things have now changed. Um, later this afternoon, about 3.30 p.m. our time, um, the Minister of Labour, Seamus O'Reilly, has directed the Canada Industrial Relations Board um, to assist WestJet and the union um, to reach a, an agreement. So essentially they're going to be going into arbitration. Ottawa has now uh, forced this step, um, leading, uh, leading the situation to potentially better off for, um, for travel plans for some folks who are going to be traveling this long weekend. So it doesn't look, things are still up in the air at this moment, but from what it's sounding like, Ottawa has now taken those steps to force arbitration both upon the Union and WestJet. So it doesn't look like there's going to be strike action? No, it doesn't look like there's going to be strike action. It looks like it's, that's been avoided for now. Um, WestJet has said in a statement that they are going to be ramping up their operations as soon as possible because today they were there were flight cancellations today in preparedness for a possible strike to take place tomorrow. So flights out of Prince George, they didn't look to be affected today, but bigger centres like Vancouver, Calgary, right. Toronto, the flights out of there were certainly affected. Affected, so it looks like things have been avoided for now. And uh, and what should you do about upcoming flights uh, if you see cancellations? Uh, like what what should people do? Right. So there's still there's still WestJet still has to get things in motion to get planes that are parked back onto the tarmac ready for service. So if you if you are concerned about your flight, if you're flying in the next couple of days, go to the WestJet website, check your flight status um, it, before heading out to the airport. That's always a good option just to make sure that you know you're not going to the airport and you're showing up and you're flying and you're realizing that your flight's been canceled. So just Check the flight status uh, with, with WestJet to make sure that your flight is still a go before heading out to the airport and heading off on your travels for this long weekend. And the big question, Adam Burles, is this going to impact your upcoming trip, trip to, uh, to Cabo? No, no, no. I'm, I'm not going to Cabo. <laughs> I'm going to the interior of BC, so I'm driving. Uh, so I, well, I will avoid... Almost as good. I will avoy, Yeah, almost. So I'll, I'll, I'll be avoiding uh, the airline system for now. Adam Burles, thank you very thank much. Thank you. In other news, the CRA is moving into its next phase of debt recovery regarding overpayments for all COVID-19 benefit programs, and it's threatening legal action if you still haven't paid. The CRA says $9.5 billion has yet to be collected, with more than half of that coming from the Canadian Emergency Response Benefit. Starting in July, legal warnings will take place if you've yet to pay back your overpayment, and this could include garnishment of wages or other income sources such as bank accounts. However, the CRA adds that legal action is the last step it would take and instead hopes to work with people who have not paid back to figure out flexible payment options. It's the early days, but Vanderhoof is looking at ways to enhance its housing complement. Council approved pursuing funding through a program called Dollars for the Doors, overseen by the Northern Development Initiatives Trust. 
The housing situation in Vanderhoof is grim and the mayor of that community is the first to admit it. It's a very tight market, um, a little easier than it was a, a couple of years ago, but uh, definitely uh, uh, we need something that we uh, is one of our main priorities and something that we're working on every day to try and uh, improve. That's why the district's council approved moving ahead with an application to the Northern Development Initiatives Trust for funding under the program called Dollars for Doors. It's a grant incentive that uh, local government applies to Northern Development for. We will vet it and if it's approved for funding then we provide that money to the local government and then the local government will divvy that money as an extra incentive for developers to build housing in the community. There are special considerations when an application is put forward. When we get an application, yeah, your housing needs is going to be matched against what we see again in the application. And we're going to vet it and say, okay, well, is that actually what the community needs based on their housing needs assessment that's been completed? Do they have a developer that's ready to build? Um, and then do we have the money to actually provide the grant, right? And then from there, it goes to our regional advisors and then an approval decision from our board. But getting housing in place in northern BC and rural communities can be a bit more daunting than it is in larger metropolitan centers. Our challenge in northern BC is that it's cost prohibitive. We don't have a lot of developers up here. So how do we actually encourage the developer to get in there and want to build at a market rate and then sell the housing? So this incentive does that. So it's actually improving the profit margin for the developer. We're okay with that. Mayor Motor says the lack of housing in his community really hampers not only the recruitment but retention of professionals. Really, it's a huge thing that we need all housing types because you, you have different segments of the population moving in. You have uh, a lot of people to, to try and please. So it's a very broad, we're, we're short on all housing and um, it, it's a tough nut to crack. But while council has given the nod to applying for the funding, it won't happen tomorrow. Cheryl Jan, CKPG News. Another phase of the National Dental Care Program was rolled out today. Both the Liberals and the New Democrats take political credit for the move aimed at helping more low-income and vulnerable Canadians get dental care. But there's still lingering confusion and frustration by both dentists and patients over just how the coverage actually works. This is an opportunity of a lifetime to advance oral health care. Health Minister Mark Holland and 10 of his cabinet colleagues held press conferences across the country Thursday to announce that children in low-income households and those with disabilities are now eligible for coverage in the federal dental care plan. But today's announcements were also a chance to make a coordinated PR push to regain political momentum after the Conservatives' big win in a by-election Monday in the former Liberal stronghold of Toronto St. Paul's. Watching the Conservatives win in St. Paul means that, like, everything we're working on could be thrown in a trash bin. Um, and that doesn't worry me because I'm a Liberal. That worries me because I'm a Canadian. To me, the stakes have never been higher. I have never wanted to work harder uh, with my caucus and in my community. And Jugmeet Singh even tried to claim some political credit, arguing it was the NDP who pushed the minority Liberals on dental care. We can get stuff done, and we got things done. And we got things done with just 25 MPs. And I want folks to know, look at what we did with our power. But the program may not be the political winner the Liberals and New Democrats are hoping for. Alberta Premier Danielle Smith said this week Alberta will withdraw from the program by 2026 because she says, quote, it unnecessarily replicates provincial plans, even though 100,000 Albertans have already signed up under the federal plan. But the bigger problem may be dentists themselves. The program is not easy to access or administer and does not cover the full costs of providing treatment, said the New Brunswick Dental Society. It doesn't meet the promises the federal government has made to Canadians, said Alberta dentists. B.C. dentists are concerned about the government's lack of clarity and collaboration. Holland, the health minister, acknowledged the problems and said he's ready to negotiate with premiers like Smith and with dentist organizations to make the program work better and, liberals hope, earn some political rewards if they do. After 36 years at D.P. Todd Secondary School, beloved music teacher Susan Klein is calling it a career. And to celebrate everything she's done for the community and the impact she's had on students, D.P. Todd held her a retirement party earlier this week, where many of Klein's former students and colleagues came out to celebrate. Tommy Osborne attended the party and brings us more. Susan is just the most incredible human. Um, 
she truly has no idea the kind of impact that she leaves on her students. After 36 years teaching music at D.P. Todd Secondary School, Susan Klein is calling it a career. To celebrate a long career that has left a huge impact on thousands of students, D.P. Todd hosted a retirement tea and a final concert, where both current and former students, as well as colleagues Klein has worked with over the years, came to congratulate her on 36 years of excellence. It's really special, and I love that people are seeing connections in the whole community. They're coming together and they see each other. They haven't seen each other for years. The amount of people who came to the retirement tea tells the whole story. The students Klein helped inspire over her career all wanted to share just how special of a teacher she was. She's the nicest woman I've ever met. She's super sweet, and she's taught me everything I know. We've gone on several school trips with her, and... I couldn't thank her more. She really instilled in me how to connect with students because I'm a teacher myself and how important that is for them to be heard because she really heard us when we would have conversations with her. Many of her students continue to pursue music even after they graduate DP Todd and they say it's thanks to the passion and love for music Klein instilled and shared with them. I mean, you, have a good, really, you have a really positive experience like that and it, especially when you're growing up it, uh, definitely makes it easier to enjoy throughout the rest of your life. <laughs> Klein says she thinks about her students all the time and says they're the reason she taught for so long. They've made such a difference in my life. They've taught me probably just as much if not more than I've taught them. And to see them here and they bring their kids and they're sharing time and they get to hear some of the students that are, that are graduating now. They'll be playing. So how cool is this to have a community that brings everybody together? Even though Klein won't be teaching at DP Todd anymore, the impact she left with her students will continue to last. Tommy Osborne, CKPG News. The lowest gas price in Prince George is sitting at $1.61.9 per litre at Costco. The lowest price in the province right now is in Grand Forks at $1.53.9 per litre. Manitoba has the lowest fuel prices on average in Canada at $1.36.6 per litre, while BC has an average price of $1.77.1 per litre. CKPG Sports is delivered by Domino's. Join the Domino's Lunch Club with 25% off all regular priced pizzas every day. Visit dominoes.ca to join the club. After testing out the waters in Quinnell, Inner City Boxing is now training athletes for their next big event in September. Anthony Correa stopped by for a practice and brings us the details. Plenty of hard work at Inner City Boxing. Looking to continue to grow as athletes and more importantly as boxers. Now, this is a very demanding sport and it's a brutal, violent sport at the same time. However, it can be a beautiful sport too. Uh, but, uh, you know, it's, there's so many scenarios that can happen in the ring, so you need to be prepared all around the board. And the main thing is your conditioning. You need to be conditioned well to be able to absorb punches, create your attack, and move around for three hard rounds. Three fighters recently returned from Quinnell from the Rumble 32 fight card. Huge experience to get in the ring and fight other opponents. With coach Kenny Lawley extremely proud of the effort the boys showed. We knew that we, there's stuff we needed to work on, and... Um, I, uh, I, I believe Jake and I did uh, pretty good for ourselves and um, the guys, they did, they did amazing. They listened well in the corner, they did everything that we were there to part in the gym and one thing that all three did, they left it all in the ring. One of those fighters is Thunder Innes, who fell in love with the sport when he was 11 years old. Growing up, Innes learned about his indigenous roots and now uses it as motivation to become the best at the sport. I really want to help our people rise and that's where I found the passion and uh, from then, when my mom told me those stories, I said to myself, you know, I want to be the greatest heavyweight champion champ you know, ever lived. And uh, that's my dream, that's my goal, to uh, help my people, help us rise. And uh, yeah, and I work every single day as hard as I can to uh, fulfill that dream. Now, it's prepping for the BC Bronze Glove Tournament, which takes place September 13th to 15th in Chilliwack. A huge step for inner city boxing, as it's a key opportunity for boxers to take the next step in their goal.
what our coach did with us when he started, he asked what our goals were. Both Jay and I, we want to go to the Olympics, and there's, uh, there's steps you must take to get there. We did the same thing with our athletes, and which school, all of them said Olympics. So the first thing we got to do is get them fights. The next thing we do is get them titles, which is what we're about to do in September. This is our first tournament, the BC Bronze Clubs, which is cool. It's a novice tournament. The TSX is up 148 points to close at 21,942. The Dow Jones is down 36 points to close at 39,164. And CN Rail went down 44 cents to close at $161.55. Good evening again, everyone. It is going to be a wet one still across many areas of our region tonight. Chance of showers for us here in Prince George, still that risk of a thunderstorm for this evening. And then a clearing trend for tomorrow. So we've been dealing with this upper level low that's been creating all of that instability and of course giving us that chance of uh, thunderstorm activity in many areas. But that's going to push off to the east. So as it does, we'll see a brief high pressure building in for at least a day or so. And then, then we're watching another Pacific frontal system that is expected to spread some rain showers. So the future cast gives you an idea. There's the low. It's pushing off to the east. So quite unsettled throughout many areas of Alberta, especially down through Calgary. But for us, we'll enjoy some sunshine tomorrow and into Saturday as well. Uh, likely going to be fairly dry for most of the day on Saturday. And then into the evening hours is when we could pick up some periods of rain as that system tracks towards us. So uh, unfortunately, some of our long weekend will be a bit rainy, but uh, certainly still going to be pretty nice overall in some areas and I'll show you on the extended but 24 Fort St. John tomorrow beautiful weather up in the peace it was today wonderful and tomorrow another wonderful day for us we'll get up to about 20 tomorrow and uh, anticipating that mix of sun and cloud as I mentioned so pretty nice weather for our Friday to enjoy as we kick off our long weekend Saturday as mentioned pretty good as well in many cases but it's Saturday late day into the evening periods of rain will develop 27 Kamloops warming up as high pressure builds same down through the Okanagan and much of the south coast drying out and brightening up as well after a rainy day today. Mackenzie 22 tomorrow down through Fort St. James and Burns Lake. It's a chance of showers as well sitting at around, around 20 degrees. We won't see showers tomorrow likely but a pretty nice day for, for our Friday. 22 McBride and uh, similar to that in Quinella as well. So drier weather for at least a day or so. So this is a look at uh, the cross Canada map and we're showing that uh, Edmonton looks pretty good, but we don't have Calgary on the map. But if you look, it will be probably pretty rainy as that low pressure or that upper level low pushes off towards uh, towards you. 15 in Regina, Winnipeg as well. Clouds and showers tomorrow. So quite unsettled uh, throughout the prairies and then really nice and pleasant as we go further east in terms of temperature. St. John's looks to be pretty much the only place that will pick up a few uh, rainy uh, conditions for the day tomorrow. It's a mixed bag for our weekend and yes it is really because uh, we will have that precipitation for part of it but not all of it. And Burns Lake actually looks pretty good. It'll be cooler on Monday for Canada Day but dry and uh, tomorrow just a very slight chance of showers in the mix. 20 degrees. 9 tonight to Mackenzie you're looking at partly sunshine sunny skies tomorrow and 22 degrees. We've got clouds in the mix for Saturday and then a pretty nice uh, Sunday and Monday although a slight chance of showers later into Monday. McBride 22 degrees tomorrow mostly cloudy a few sunny breaks though clouds on Saturday but still remaining dry and then a little bit of morning rain on Sunday and a few showers at a bit cooler for Canada Day. Quinnell 9 overnight tonight 23 the next couple of days so really starting to warm up again for a few days and even Sunday looking pretty good in terms of the numbers it is going to be a slight chance of showers though so for us we're going to see that system coming in later into the afternoon evening on Saturday periods of rain developing likely and that will go into most of our Sunday and then clearing out just in time for Canada Day. Look at that. We will likely see some sunshine on Monday, which will be fantastic. CKPG Sports is delivered by Domino's. Join the Domino's Lunch Club with 25% off all regular price pizzas every day. Visit dominoes.ca to join the club. As you mentioned yesterday, the 2024 Euro Championships knockout stage is set to kick off on Saturday. 16 teams are looking to capture one of the most prized trophies in soccer. Some notable matchups, beginning with Spain, who finished with an undefeated record and will be taking on Georgia, who are in their first ever Euros tournament. Germany will play Denmark, Portugal takes on Slovenia, and two top-ranked countries, France and Belgium, will face off in what will be an exciting matchup. 
On the other side of the bracket, Romania will play Netherlands. Austria and Turkey will battle it out. England will take on Slovakia. And then Italy will look to keep the match alive against Switzerland after punching their ticket with a last second goal. Matches in round one will go from Saturday through Tuesday. And that is all the time we have tonight, folks. Thank you so much for joining us as always. And we will see you tomorrow. Have yourselves a wonderful night. Thank you.